In this video I'm going to show you how I built this cool evil spit for Halloween. We're going to start off by making hands for the spit, and these will be the hands that hold the spit itself. The pictures are pretty self-explanatory. Just cut a block of wood and attached some coaxial cable. This is like the cable that attaches from your cable box. Cover that with some black Gorilla Tape, and uh, now we're going to see a time lapse of me creating the rest of the hand. It'll look like the one on the left, and don't worry about that cable. It'll disappear out of the picture in just a second. Here I am making knuckles using plastic bag and uh, painter's tape. You just wad the plastic uh, bag up into a little ball and tape it to the hand where you think the knuckle should be. At this point we're ready to give the hand some flesh and I'm going to coat the hand with spray adhesive and then wrap a plastic bag around each one of the coaxial cables to give the fingers some meat. Now I'm going to shrink the plastic bag onto the coaxial cables using a heat gun pretty simple process just heat up the plastic bags and they'll shrink right onto the coaxial cable and give you a nice firm um, basis for the rest of the process At this point we're ready to corpse the hand which essentially means adding the final layer of plastic and for that I'll be using strips of clear plastic drop cloth and it's the same process using spray adhesive, spraying it onto each one of the fingers and then wrapping it to uh, give it a little bit more of a smoother texture than just the uh, plastic bags because I, I want a little smoother texture. But again, I do want it to look like uh, something that's, you know, evil or rotting or dead. Uh, actually, for this, I wanted something to look kind of like it was uh, like charcoal a little bit, very white and ashy and um, with black lines in it to make it look like it was really crispy. Um, here I decided that the thumb wasn't thick enough so I added more plastic bag and just wrapped that around, shrunk it with the heat gun and then added another layer of plastic from the uh, drop cloth. So this is how they came out before painting. I think they came out pretty good. Uh, they're poseable and they uh, look like big, huge, evil hands. So now I'm going to paint them starting off with a base of white spray paint. And this will allow me to then antique the hands using black stain and some brown paint, which is what I'm doing right now. And just stir that up, add that to both of the hands. You want to really coat this. This is going to be like it's going to start to give your hand that texture, that uh, burnt texture that I was talking about earlier. And just coat the hand completely, wipe it off with a cloth, and that will give you a, uh, an antiquing to start off with. So with the antiquing done, I'm going to begin the painting process. Unfortunately, I don't have all of that in the video due to a, a technical error. But uh, all I did was essentially paint the hands uh, grayish white. Um, what sort of a dry brush technique, and then I went over it again with a darker black, and this is what you end up with. Looks pretty good. At this point, this is the 
uh, arms that I'm going to be building that are, will hold up the hand that holds up the spit. But all I really did here was uh, make a stand for a 2x4, wrap that with chicken wire, and then molded it into the shape of an arm, then wrapped plastic around that, more of that drop cloth plastic, and um, it came out pretty good. They look like arms. And same process again, just paint them both white, then uh, antique them, that's this picture, and then in the next picture you'll see the final paint job, and it matched up real nice, came out very nicely. Next up is the base of the hand, and for that I just wrapped chicken wire around the uh, base structure that I had made with wood and filled that in with great stuff foam. And we're trying to go for appearance of dirt here. The idea is that the hands are busting up out of the ground and holding up the spit. So I coated all of that with a brown stain, actually a black stain, and then went over it again with a brown paint. And I used a uh, spray gun to accomplish this. Not spray paint, but latex paint so that the foam wouldn't rot. Now we're looking at a test of the entire prop, uh, minus the fire. And I wanted the prop to look like it was being turned by somebody or something, and we decided to go with a cheapo blow mold skeleton. And the, the way the skeleton is attached is just with a piece of uh, insulating foam stuck onto the end of the um, handle that I made with PVC pipe, three-quarter PVC. And then the hands of the skeleton are just zip-tied to that. And it actually lets the hands rotate around uh, that pipe so it gives you the illusion that he's you know, turning the thing and it's turning in his hands. Um, and the joints of the skeleton are connected just with zip-ties. And at this point, I'm going to take the skeleton and turn it into something cool. And this was done with uh, basic plastic wrap corpsing. I went over it again, did a little bit more, gave him a nose, wasn't happy with it, cut some holes in the side of his face, removed one of the eyes, did some more corpsing, and then I added some hair, and uh, we decided that he would be a chef. So we gave him a, a chef's hat, my wife made that, and then we created a chef costume out of a child's karate gi. These are a close-up of the hands where I actually painted in the different fingers because those cheapo skeletons don't really have that. We also corpsed the arm and the whole thing, and this is another test of it showing the uh, prop turning along with the you know finished product up at the top anyway before we added the rest of his costume. And again, the joints are just, they've all, the skeleton's been taken apart and the joints are connected with zip ties, and that's what gives him that the flexibility, and here are some more pictures of him and that's the final product with his uh, chef's outfit and now we're moving on to the fire and this is a fire that we had made a few years ago and uh, I decided that that needed to be improved for sure so um, what I decided to do was uh, wrap the entire thing with chicken wire and then uh, use some orange uh, Halloween lights wrap the whole thing with that and then we're gonna be covering that with fake wood that uh, we're making here and this is using blue foam and real simple process just take a file drag it across the uh, foam and hit it with the heat gun cut out the uh, grooves in the wood uh, the grain with a soldering iron making knots and then uh, going for painting the whole thing and I have a whole other separate video on this if you'd like to learn this entire process but uh, briefly what I did was uh, coat each of, of these with latex paint and then uh, go over them with black and brown spray paint and then gave them a dry brush uh, some of them with a white paint to make uh, some of the bring out highlights make it look like ash like uh, burnt chunks of the wood were turned ashy and uh, it came out really well and you can check out that other video if you want information on this whole process um, most of these had latex paint applied some of them didn't um, and again spray paint will eat away at foam so that's kind of the reason for the base of the latex paint, but also to bring out the grain in the uh, prop wood. For this next piece of wood, I'm going to create a really ashy section. It's a piece that I went across the grain with the uh, soldering iron to create that crisscross pattern. I just hit it with some white paint, feathered it out because um, it did come out a little too quickly and not exactly what I wanted, but I feathered that out, added a little bit more black and then some more white. and They give you that ashy look. 
and then I painted the back of these with a fluorescent orange because I didn't really care what the back looked like. I wanted it to look like it was hot and burning and red. Here are a couple of shots of the finished product. You can see the wood grain, you can see a lot of that texture along with the ash. And again, the ash is very easy to create because of all the texture we made with the file and the heat gun. It's just a dry brush of white. Here's one with not so much, but that crisscross section is kind of white and ashy. So it came up pretty good, especially the knots in the wood. So next I needed to attach the wood to the chicken wire that I wrapped around the fan, and I did that using great stuff foam, and maybe a little too much of it there because it kind of seeped out, but when it's illuminated with the Halloween lights, it looks like coal. And I'm also going to be painting the great stuff, but you can kind of see it there. And this is what it looks like while it's running before I painted it. And for the fire, the flame effect up at the top, I used a uh, three LED spotlight, a red spotlight, and uh, just kind of situated it on the side of the fabric 